Hello there, my name is Richard McMahon from the police recruitment training website howtobecome.com and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to pass the new police officer online assessment process. So if you are applying to become a police officer in the UK, you are going to be assessed online and as such I strongly recommend you watch this tutorial in full from beginning to end because I promise to make a big difference to your preparation. Now before I get into the training, a very warm welcome to this UK Police Officer Assessment Process training tutorial. My name is Richard McMahon, that's me there in the centre. I've been helping people for many years to successfully pass the Police Officer Recruitment Process and I'm going to do that today by giving you lots of top tips to help you prepare effectively. Please make sure you subscribe by clicking the red button below the video and then you won't miss out on any of the weekly training videos I'm uploading. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn if you want to. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below the video and it's always good to connect with like-minded professionals. And I would also appreciate your support if you gave the video a like because that tells me you enjoy the content and I will therefore spend more time creating police recruitment training videos for you. Now this is what I'm going to cover in this police officer recruitment training video. Please make sure you take notes as I progress. I'm going to explain the new police officer assessment process in detail and what is likely to be involved. I will also give you a timeline for completing the police officer online assessment process. I will explain how you can prepare effectively for the new police assessment process and then I will also answer some of the frequently asked questions about this new online police officer assessment process. So four really good reasons why you should stay tuned and I will also provide you with some sample test exercise and interview questions to help you succeed. Okay so what is this new online police officer assessment process? Well, the new online police officer assessment process has been created by the College of Policing who are responsible for creating the police officer recruitment process, including the standards, the competencies and the values. Now, it has been designed as an assessment tool for police forces in the UK to assess potential police constables and officers as part of the police officer recruitment process. And as you and I know, the way that they are currently assessing candidates is remotely online. So the process has had to change to adapt to the current conditions. So what is the structure of this new online police officer assessment process? Well, the new police online assessment process consists of the following four core exercises. So you will have to undertake what is called a situational judgment test, SJ where you will be presented with some situations and you will have to then decide what you would do in that particular situation and you are given a number of options. I will go into more detail about that as we progress through the training tutorial. You will also have to undertake a video interview which is competency based. Now I'll tell you which competencies you are likely to be assessed against again as we progress through the tutorial. Now in the past you would attend an assessment process, an assessment centre and you would go along for a face-to-face -face interview. Well the interview is now going to be carried out on your computer using a webcam and a microphone. Then you'll have to undertake a written exercise and finally a briefing stroke presentation exercise. Now there are other elements of the police selection process including application form, and even perhaps a police final interview and obviously fitness tests and medicals. Now these exercises test the same core competencies and values that are used in policing and these are fundamental to your success. I cannot begin to emphasize enough how important these competencies and values are. So you will be expected to demonstrate the competencies and values throughout the exercises and I will give you some tips on how to do that as we progress. So let's have a look at the police officer competencies and values that are used during the selection process. Well there are basically six core competencies. These are being emotionally aware. 
So are you aware of your own emotions and also that of others too? The next one is innovative and open-minded. So are you open to change? Do we do you embrace change? Can you be innovative and creative when coming up with solutions to situations that you will be faced with? Can you analyze critically? And what that means is reading and assessing information and then using it to come up with a solution. Are you able to deliver support and inspire? So you obviously have to deliver as a police officer. So when you turn up at an incident, you have to deliver. People will expect you to do so. And also delivering is, is about building positive relationships within the community that you are serving, supporting your team, the, the police team that you are a part of, supporting the community and also working alongside other key important stakeholders such as a fire service, the ambulance service, the local authority, etc., and also inspire people to do the right thing. Collaborative is basically teamwork. Can you work with other people to achieve common police objectives? And also taking ownership. I love this competency. I am somebody who will always take ownership of situations to solve problems. Um, I used to be in the fire service for about 17 years. And I would always take ownership in difficult, pressurised and stressful situations. And you will have to do so whilst working in the police force. So you have to take ownership of situations and the police officer online assessment process will assess your ability to do just that. Now there are also four core values. So we have police competencies and we also have values. And those are transparency. So you're not hiding things, you are honest. Um, you know, in your approach when dealing with situations, you have high degrees of integrity Public service is another value. You remember that you are there predominantly to serve the public. Okay, so you serve the public in your role as a police officer. And another one is impartiality. So you're not prejudging situations. You are remaining impartial. You are then using the information that is available to you to solve problems based on the operational procedures of the police force that you are working for. So those are the six core competencies and the four core values that you will be assessed against. And I'll talk more about those as we progress through the tutorial and a few tips on how you can score highly during the assessment elements. So let's give a full overview now of the new police officer selection process. Well, you would register your interest with a police force. You would then submit your application form and undertake eligibility checks. And then you would progress through to the four areas, this new online police officer assessment process that I'm covering today. So stage one is the situational judgment test. You need to pass that before you progress to stage two, which is the video interview, that competency-based video interview. You would then progress through to stage three, which is the written exercise and the briefing and presentation stage. And then finally, you would go along to a force interview, a police final interview, and then have a job fitness test, biometric vetting, and drugs testing. So that's an overview of the whole police officer selection process in the UK. And those areas that we're concentrating on now is the new online assessment, which is the situational judgment test, the video interview, and the written exercise. So let's start working through those individual elements. Let's take a look at the situational judgment test for the police officer selection process. Now, the police situational judgment test consists of 12 scenarios and questions. So you'll have a number of scenarios to read through, and then you will have questions to answer. So there's four potential answers, and I'll give you a sample question in a second to explain what it might look like. Now, once a question has been displayed on your computer screen, you will be required to select one answer from four potential answers. Now, the answer, and this is the important part, the answer you select should reflect what you would do in the situation described. And it is important to be honest, but my tip is to make sure that you understand, you learn, you believe in those core competencies and the values. Now, all of the situational judgment test questions are based on police constable scenarios. So you would be thinking about how a police officer would act in a given situation. And these kind of scenarios are also a good indication 
of your beliefs and values and what you would do in given situations. Now, you will not need any prior technical knowledge to complete this test. Obviously, you need to know how to use your computer. The questions are there to assess how you would best respond to a situation. And the system would then analyse if how you respond matches the police core competencies and values being assessed. So let's take a look at a police officer situational judgment test sample question. So we're presented with a scenario. It says you are sitting in the staff canteen when three other members from your constabulary sit down at your table. As you, as you engage in friendly discussion with them, two of the members begin to mock the other person for his religion. Although they are only joking, you can see that the individual in question has been upset by these comments. Select the answer option below that reflects how you would react in this situation. So we are now given four answer options. Answer option one is join in. It's just a bit of banter. Option two, speak up and inform your colleagues that they should have more respect for other religions and that their behaviour is not acceptable. Option three, ask the offended colleague to speak to you in private afterwards and then you will discuss the comments with him. And then option four, try to change the subject. So there's four options there. Now, the correct answer that I believe is number two, speak up and inform your colleagues that they should have more respect for other religions and their behaviour is not acceptable, which it isn't in that kind of situation. Now, some people may decide to join in. And if you are one of those persons who would join in because it's a bit of banter, I would suggest the police is not for you. Now, option four, try to change the subject, is not good either because you are basically brushing discrimination under the carpet. Option three, ask the offended colleague to speak to you in private afterwards where you will discuss the comments with them. Again, that is not acceptable because you are letting the people get away with what they're doing when it's not acceptable. So it's your point there to step up and say, no, this is not acceptable. You can't do this. So the correct answer option there is two. Now, this is the most efficient response because you're clearly demonstrating here that di discrimination of any kind will not be tolerated and it should not happen in the police. OK, so it's important to speak up and let them know that this is not acceptable. OK, so that's a sample situational judgment test, the kind of question that you may encounter during the test. So if you want more of these police situational judgment test practice questions, I've put a link in the in the description below the video that takes you through to my website where you can you can download more of these. Don't do it yet because I've still got lots to work through, but at some stage you can have a look at the link and it can take you through where you can practice loads of these questions, those kind of questions that will help you gain an understanding of how you're likely to be assessed. Let's now move on to the video interview, the police officer online video interview, which as I said previously is competency based. So if you are successful in stage one, the situational judgment test, you will be sent an email inviting you to take part in stage two, which is the competency based video interview. Now the duration of this interview will last up to 30 minutes and it consists of five questions. So there's five interview questions that you have to answer. Now you will have one minute to view the question and then you've got five minutes to provide your answer. So an overview of this. So as I say, you are required to answer five competency based interview questions. I'll give you an example in a second with a suggested answer and you will use your webcam and a microphone. Now your answers are recorded live by the system. Now you are presented with one question at a time along with additional information in bullet points and you have one minute to read that information. Now the information will also be presented to you in the form of a pre-recorded video message by an assessor and you will then get five minutes to answer the question. You are not able to pre-record your answers, okay, because you don't know what the questions will be. So let me explain the different competencies that you are going to be assessed against the police officer video interview. Now your answers to the video questions will be assessed against these values and competencies. So there's three values, public service, transparency and integrity, and two competencies, innovative and open-mindedness and taking ownership for situations. Remember that, that one, taking ownership, which is my favourite competency. 
So what happens at the end of the video interview? I'm going to give you a question in a second and explain how I recommend that you structure your answers to gain the highest scores possible. But what happens at the end of the police officer online video interview? Well, an, an assessor will review and score your recorded answers after you have completed the interview. Now, you will be sent a report on how well you matched the competencies and the values that are being assessed against you. And if you pass the video interview, you then move on to undertake stage three. But let's now take a look at a sample police officer video interview question. So the question here that I will use as an example is tell me about a time when you demonstrated your ability to be innovative. So that's quite a difficult question. Now, because this is a competency based police officer interview question, I strongly recommend that you structure your answer using the STAR technique. Now, some of you will have heard of the STAR technique before. If you have, I'll just give you a quick recap. If you haven't, then I th this is a brilliant way to answer any kind of police officer behavioral interview question. So you use a STAR technique, which is situation, task, action, result. And you start off and you tell the interviewer the situation that you were faced with. You then explain the task that needed to be done. You will then go into detail and explain the action that you took and any action that other people took who were part of the scenario. And then you finish off and tell the interviewer the results following your actions. It's very important to make sure that the result is always positive following your actions. So situation, task, action, result is a perfect way to structure your answers and it makes sure that you cover everything within your response. So let's have a look at a sample answer. Tell me about a time when you demonstrated your ability to be innovative. Now remember, one of the core competencies that you're assessed against here during the online police officer video interview is innovative and open-minded. In your answer, show you can be creative, you can solve problems, and you are also open to new methods of working. Now, I believe a great way to structure, not structure your answers, but when you respond to these kind of questions, is to mention the core competencies within your response. And I'll show you how I do that right now. So let's take a look at a sample answer using the STAR technique. To that question, tell me about a time when you demonstrated your ability to be innovative. Situation. Whilst at work in a previous role, our manager entered the office and explained to everyone in the team that there were going to be some in-depth changes to the department due to the business being taken over by a new owner. Now, some of the changes involved people within the team taking on new responsibilities. And after the manager left the office, the majority of the team started complaining about the proposed changes. As an experienced member of the team, I saw it as my task to be innovative and to come up with a way to help people embrace the changes positively with an open mind and to also encourage them to view the change as a positive thing that could actually bring new experiences and opportunities for everyone. I decided to hold an informal team meeting the following morning and I encouraged everyone to attend. I explained that this was their opportunity to discuss the proposed changes and how they made them feel. Now during the meeting I used a flip chart and I asked questions, sorry, I asked everyone to give me one word that described how they felt about the proposed changes. Now the words predominantly focused on frustration, fear and anger. I then used the flip chart to explain to the group how change was actually an opportunity for personal growth, self-development, strength of character and also improvements to their daily working life. At the end of the meeting, everyone agreed that the session had helped to improve their mindset and it had also encouraged them to be more open-minded about the changes as opposed to prejudging them. Six weeks after the changes were implemented, everyone in the team felt happier at work and the team was a more positive and productive environment than previously. So you can see there by using situation, task, action, result, that it enables me to provide an in-depth structured answer around the core competencies. And you can see there in the task element, I've mentioned the core competency words as an experienced member of the team. I saw it's my task to be innovative and to come up with a way to help people embrace the changes with an open mind. OK, now, of course, you have to, you know, demonstrate that you're able to do that. And that scenario is definitely being innovative and encouraging people to have an open mind to those changes because you are explaining how change is an opportunity for personal growth, self-development, strength of character and also improvements to daily working life. And then the results speak for themselves. So you can see there that that's a great way 
for answering the online police officer video interview questions, the STAR technique. Now again, I've still got some more things to go through, but I have put a link to some police officer interview sample answers in the description below the video. Again, once we've finished, please do check that out because I believe it will help you to structure your own really solid responses to the police officer interview questions. But let's now take a look at the written exercise online assessment. So if you are successful in stage two, that video interview, you will be then sent two separate invitations via email, inviting you to take part in stage three. Now the first of which is a written exercise. So the exercise length is approximately 40 minutes. So the total test of this assessment, sorry, the, the total length of this written exercise is 40 minutes. Now within that time frame of 40 minutes, you will need to read all of the information that's provided and then complete the exercise. So you will be given supporting information and documentation. So you will undertake the role of a police constable for this written exercise and you're required to complete an urgent written task for your direct manager. Now the task is likely to focus on an issue in the local community and you will be provided with four sets of information. Now this could be a letter of complaint, an email from a member of the public, it might be an incident report, an email from your manager or the sergeant for example, and you use this information to create your written report. So you have to read all of the information carefully and then respond to it based on the brief. Now don't forget one of the competencies that I mentioned at the beginning was about analysing critically. So you have to read all of the information quickly and then create your report. Don't forget that spelling, grammar and punctuation are very, very important during this particular exercise. Now you are required to type the written exercise on your computer or device. So make sure you practice this before you actually go along to the real assessment online. So when you're taking the test, you will need a desktop computer, a laptop or a tablet with a good inter internet connection. Make sure you're familiar with the keyboard. At the end of the exercise, you are required to use your webcam and microphone to record your name to verify your identity so that you don't get anybody else to do it for you. You have to do it yourself. It's really, really important. Yeah, of course, you can practice this beforehand. And I would strongly recommend you do so by, you know, using the information that I give you. I'm going to give you a test in a second that you could create your own response to. I recommend you do so, but don't get anybody else to create the written exercise for you. You cannot take breaks during this written exercise. It must be completed in one sitting. So how you're going to be assessed during the police officer written exercise? Well, the values that you're assessed against are impartiality. The competencies are analyse critically, deliver, support and inspire collaborative working, working with others, and also taking ownership for situations. Now, it is essential that you only use the information provided, the provided information that you're given during the assessment, and you do not make any new information up in your report, okay? You are not allowed to use any external resources to aid your preparation, such as the core competencies and values printed out next to you. You can't do that. An assessor will then review and score your written exercise after you've completed this assessment, and also the briefing presentation exercise, which I'll come on to in a second. So let's take a quick look at the type of documentation and supporting information you may receive as part of this police officer online written exercise. So here is an email from your sergeant or manager. And across the top, it says Walker, because it's Sergeant Walker at fixshirepolice.com. And the subject is responding to Mrs. Smith. So dear PC Bricks, which is you. As you know, as of May the 1st, we have beefed up patrols on North Fixshire High Street. This is codenamed Operation Beef Eater. There's been a sharp increase in physical violence involving youths recently, and the police are under huge pressure to stop this from happening. After a series of stabbings, I've also authorised officers to conduct stop and search on anyone whom they feel looks intimidating or threatening. I truly think this is the best way to increase confidence in the public with the community of North Fixshire. Now, unfortunately, some people aren't in agreement with this new approach. Specifically, I've received a written complaint from Shirley Smith of Odds and Ends Tailoring, which is a popular store on the high street. She claims that the presence of extra officers is scaring away her customers and that it's really intimidating. Furthermore, 
She says that her son was stopped unfairly by officers and that he is traumatised by the incident. I have attached her letter for you to look at and also a case file for her son who has a pretty terrible track record. Along with this, we've also received a couple of other complaints from shop owners, but I can deal with these myself. I've attached some of their feedback, though, just to give you an idea of what they are saying. And then it says, please could you respond to Mrs. Smith explaining exactly why the stop and searches plus the extra officers are warranted. I've also attached a sheet which thoroughly debunks her claims about her son. So you then have to create a response. Now, I'm going to give you some more information to use, and I would encourage you to practice this yourself. It will be good practice for you. Please could you respond to Mrs. Smith explaining exactly why the stop and searches plus the extra officers are warranted. And I've also attached a sheet which thoroughly debunks her claims about her son. So that part there is a lead. I think that's giving you a prompt as to what you should do when responding to this particular situation. Now, you may also get a letter of complaint for you to read, so I'll quickly go through this with you. I am writing to express my sincere regret at the way the police in North Fickshire have conducted themselves over the past four weeks. And we can see here that this is from Shirley Smith, the owner of the Odds and Ends. Um, first of all, as I'm aware, the police are increasing foot patrols in the area. We received a newsletter about this, but I had absolutely no chance to give you feedback. How can the police operate like this? They should be transparent with the general public. And it goes without saying that the increased number of police officers in the area has detracted from my customers and business has been seriously down as a result. It's really intimidating to see officers all over the place, especially for new visitors. Secondly, on a more personal note, my son was forced to undergo a stop and search routine by officers. This was both unprovoked and humiliating for him. The officers found no evidence to suggest that he was a threat, and to my knowledge, he was not behaving in any way that would have brought about this assumption. So, my advice is to respond to each point in the letter that's raised by making sure you focus on the values and competencies being assessed. So, you are going to create a response to this. So your sergeant has asked you to respond to that letter. Now, you may also get further information. And in this particular case is an incident report. Now, this is from PC Bradley and it is about um, it is about Shirley Smith's son. So here's the report. I was walking down North Fixture High Street at approximately 416 on Monday. Ahead of me, I noticed that there was a disturbance happening. Two boys were punching each other. They were on the floor and one of them was bleeding heavily. My partner and I quickly rushed over to intervene. We pulled the two boys apart. One of them, Ben Smith, started swearing at me. It was not the first time I've encountered Mr. Smith. In fact, we have had a number of experiences with him. None of them are good. On this occasion, I felt that it was entirely warranted to enforce a stop and search under the protocols of Operation Beef Eater. Mr. Smith did not react well to this. In fact, he flat out refused to cooperate, only doing so when we threatened arrest. Although the inspection of Mr. Smith did not reveal any items which could be deemed contrary to the law, I feel that my behaviour in this circumstance was completely justified. Absolutely. So then you would use all of that information to provide your response. So it is really, really important that you not only understand the core competencies and the values, but you respond as requested by your sergeant and respond to each point in the letter. But make sure your grammar, spelling and punctuation are accurate within your response to the complainant. So my advice when we finish this presentation, because there's still a bit more to go through, is practice creating a written report, a written response and um, based on the information that's provided. So let's have a look now to the briefing presentation exercise. Now, this second part of stage three. So the written exercise is the first part of stage three. This is the second part is the briefing exercise. Now, this is the final part of this new police online assessment process. So as you can see, you've got a lot to work through. But, you know, I think if you prepare fully, you know, use the resources that I'm going to come on to in a second, then I, I believe you shouldn't have any problems as long as you understand the competencies and the values. Now, the test length. Now, the briefing exercise will last for a maximum of 46 minutes. The test will be broken down into 10 minutes to prepare using information that you're given and then a further 36 minutes to answer the questions that relate to the information. So the test overview. You will undertake the role of a police constable for this task, where you are presented with a scenario in which you're required to handle a series of issues. Now, during this exercise, you'll be provided with a set of questions relating to the issues from the scenario, which you must provide answers to. 
So you will be provided with additional information again and materials to aid your preparation within the first 10 minutes of the exercise. After the preparation phase, the 10 minutes, you then get 36 minutes to present your answers broken down into the following stages. So the first part is that you are required to answer questions relating to the first part of the scenario and you do that for 12 minutes. Part two, you then are given a further some more information and four new questions based on the second part of the scenario and you're given a total of 12 minutes to complete that stage. And then part three, you'll be given further information and another four new questions based on the third part and again you have 12 minutes, so 36 minutes in total. So quite a lot to do there. So the values that are being assessed during the briefing presentation assessment is public service and the competencies are emotionally aware and innovative and open-minded and also taking ownership. Now it is essential that you only use the information that's provided and that you do not make any new information up in your report. The assessor will review and score both the written exercise after you've completed that and this assessment and then you will know your scores. Now remember you are undertaking the role of a PC so you will be expected to answer the questions as if you are a PC with general knowledge on how the police are expected to build positive relationships and community relationships. So make sure you read and understand the competencies that are being assessed. No technical knowledge of policing is required. Now you are not allowed to use any external resources to aid your preparation, again such as the core competencies and values printed out next to you. We need to learn and understand those and I'll tell you a great way to do that in a second. So my top tips for the police officer briefing presentation assessment. Think about the implications of your decisions. OK, so when you go into the briefing exercise, you will need to give clear rationale for every single decision that you've made. And if you understand the core competencies and the values, it will be easy for you to do that. So consider the structure of your response. Now, it's imperative that you can properly structure your response, as this will help to make your ideas clearer to the assessor. Now, the clearer your response, the better you will score and the more logical your ideas will come across. So again, the competencies and values, these will play a vital role in how you are scored for this part of the assessment. Now, make sure you factor the competencies into your responses. And don't forget, as I said previously, think about calling them by name. So, for example, you might say it's important that our officers are open minded when dealing with members of the public. Now, the better you can do this, the higher your scores will be. A few more tips. Plan for further information and questions. So as I showed you during those three different parts, each one 12 minutes, you get more information, more questions. So plan for that. Now, obviously, you can't predict exactly what the assessor is going to ask you, but it's always good to have a think about what types of questions you'll be asked. Posture matters. If you've ever performed a presentation before, then you'll be aware that how you physically present yourself can make a big difference. Now, you need to project an air of confidence without coming across as brash or arrogant. But remember that this exercise is just as much about convincing the police that you can make big decisions and that they should have faith in you as it is actually producing a good report. Answering questions. When it comes to answering the questions, you'll need to do this in the correct way. It's OK to take a moment to think before speaking as you consider what has been asked. Don't just rush into an answer without considering the question first, because if you don't answer properly, then this will show that you are not a good listener and that you don't pay enough attention, both of which are core qualities for police constables to have. OK, so what I would like you to do now is to go through to this page here. If you click the link in the top right hand corner of the video, it goes through to this page. Now, we have created a course um, that's run by our expert tutor. So you can find out more about this course and it will help you to prepare for the full entire police officer selection process and this new online assessment. Um, we're rated excellent on Trustpilot. Lots of people are successfully passing the new police officer selection process after attending this course. So if you come through to this page and you click that, it will take you down to the bottom and we have the dates that we are running them so you won't have to wait too long. And you can access this by this online webinar. So please do check that out. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been quite comprehensive. Please do watch it again and take notes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because then you I don't want you to miss out on any of the videos that I'm uploading. And the only way that you'll get to know about those is if you subscribe to the channel. Please also give the video a like. We put a lot of time and effort into creating these resources for you. 
Don't forget to check the other resources in the description below the video. I've put some more links to additional resources to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the best for passing the new online police officer assessment process. Have a brilliant day.